Hello and welcome. Today we're going to continue our conversations about using Power BI to manage your sales with a focus on promotion effectiveness and category management. A quick refresher, we started our journey talking about year-over-year -year sales analysis, taking a deeper dive into price, volume, cost, walk for a gross margin. Basically what we did before was we took a look at our margin, which is $15 million, and we broke it down by the very important components such as price, which in our case, uh, the price strategy was positive, yielding 55 million improvement, unit costs, okay, unit costs went up relative to less, last year, then we're looking at volume and mix, and then we're looking at the products that had been discontinued and also added to our portfolio. This calculation is extremely important as you're trying to understand whether your growth of your sales is actually profitable. And if you're trying to understand what's happened, this is probably one of the most impactful type of analysis that you should be able to do. If you do not understand your price, volume, cost, walk for your margin, you really have no idea whether you're making money or losing money on your sales. Most likely, however, you are not there yet with this calculation. You have something that looks like this. You have this year versus last year comparison. You are looking at your book of business. Some of your units are doing well, you're in green. Other business units are doing not so well, you're in red. And then overall, your portfolio is kind of doing, staying in yellow. What you wanna do is you wanna analyze the trend though. And as you do, you are seeing that there's a major negative thing happening here. Overall, your sales have a pretty decent seasonality and you see that for the first several weeks, your current year sales, which is this green solid line, pretty much followed more or less the dotted line from the last year. And things were doing pretty well until they were starting to divert. And what you're trying to understand is answer very important questions. Is there anything you could do to catch up? Is the problem that you're not running enough promotions? Well, the next question is, what kind of information do you really need to have available so that you could do your promotion planning correctly? And what other considerations you should think about before you're making a good choice? Well, let's see if we can answer this question. What I've done here is I've brought in a bunch of different drivers that I might be willing to consider to understand what's impacting my business. So when my this year and last year start to diverge, diverge quite a bit, I want to start looking into some of the drivers to understand what might be happening. And this is the type of analysis that you want to be able to do in your environment as well. So let's see what we have going on. Here in this chart, I just have a list of all of my products and I'm looking at the revenue by product. And then on the right, I have a bunch of different, I call them revenue correlations basically a bunch of different factors that might be coming in to explain what's happening. So let's click at the top product. So basically let's take a look here first at the trend. You see that my business has quite a bit of seasonality. I have a peak in the last week of October. I have a peak in the last week of October. I have a peak in the end of November. I have a peak in the end of in the early in early December. So very much my year looks very seasonal uh, overall. But however, if I look at these other factors like weather related things or demographic related things, I'm not seeing a whole lot of correlations other, because all of these values are very low. However, if I click on this product, things change quite a bit. So number one, I can see that I still have the seasonality, right? But then I see that my business actually quite a bit depends on other things. So here, I'm looking at weather, there is a little bit of a dependency, right? But uh, I also have some other things. So for example, this product sells really well in uh, zip codes that have a lot of kids that don't have a lot of seniors. And then if I click here, uh, it's actually quite different. Uh, it's, it seems to be selling better in the zip codes that have seniors and don't have a lot of kids. Now, things are not likely to change dramatically year over year when it comes to demographic indicators. Uh, but what I'm trying to uh, explain here is you might need to understand all of the drivers, weather, demographics, other things, in order to understand why one year doesn't look quite as well as the other. Now, let's take a look at this product here. 
The other thing that you want to understand as you're looking at trends is you want to break down your, your trend into several components. So here, what's happening, we have a little bit of forecasting that Power BI is doing for us, but we don't really understand how Power BI does it. Well, if you want to understand this, let's take a look at this chart here. So in the first swim lane, in this swim lane, basically that's just a replica of what we see in Power BI, in the Power BI trend chart. The second swim lane actually tells me what the seasonality is. And you could see that the first year, 2015, uh, starting in January 2015, looks very much similar to, to this, right? So we see that there is quite a bit of seasonality. So 2015 and 2016 look quite a bit different. The last, the, the middle swim lane is the trend. Right, so when I'm trying to understand what is happening, I'm trying to take my values and break them into two buckets. Seasonality, this is what's going to happen year over year. For example, we have some seasonal demand around holidays. And then I want to look at category or I want to look at my trend overall without seasonality and see whether demand is up or down. So in this particular case, here we see a big dip. So we see that dip reflected here. Right, so if I understand seasonality and I understand the trend, then when I look into my variances, I can kind of take a look and see, okay, what's happening, right? So I have a different lens. If I look at this chart here, I have, again, seasonality. This explained by seasonality, seasonal component. And then I see that my trend overall for this product is positive. So before you jump into trying to solve the problem with promotions, you need to understand, okay, do I have visibility into all of the drivers for the data that I own? And also, do I understand this is analogy and trend component of my time series? The question is, is the information available in this sort of analysis enough for you to start planning effective promotion and category management? And I would argue no, because you are only able to see your own version of the data. You do not understand what's happening with the category overall. So for example, here, when you're looking at this dip in consumption, the question is, did the dip was experienced, was the dip experienced just by our company or was the entire category experiencing similar, similar trend? So um, if the category is shrinking and my sales numbers are shrinking, but my share of the category stays the same, I would reasonably say that it's not like there's something that I'm doing wrong as a category manager or brand manager. Something is happening at a macro side could be macroeconomic causes, could be something else, but basically it's out of my con outside of my control. However, if the market is going up, if the category is going up, if my share is shrinking and my numbers are down, I'm sitting in a really bad spot. I need to figure out what's going on. So it's very important to bring in the market share and total category view into the portfolio before you start even thinking about managing and running promotions. Now, what I've done here, I brought in a couple of data points just to kind of highlight some of the thinking that you should be putting to work as, you, as you're starting to consider your promotions. So the first thing which you want to understand is that pricing is not necessarily a good proxy into how the category will work overall. So what I've done here is I've created a variable called correlation of price to category sales. And as you can see overall, my, my correlation is 0 0.6, right? So this is 0 0.6, 0 0.6. It's a very low correlation. Effectively, what that says is that uh, there's almost no correlation. Uh, as prices go up and down, my sales go up and down, but don't, don't necessarily uh, match with each other. So I'm trying to make this point with this chart. And basically, if you look at this chart, you will see that sometimes when... Uh, so the green line is price. The price will go up or it will go down. However, the dips and values between price and category sales uh, are, not, are, are not in sync. However, what would you, ex and that makes sense because demand, when you look at demand overall, demand for the category overall uh, is not often very elastic when it comes to price. Sometimes it is. Some products are highly elastic. So when the price goes down, then the entire category bounces up and, and enjoys a lot of demand. But a lot of times category demand on the product is based on a bunch of different factors where the price, as long as the price stays within reasonable, uh, within a reasonable level, it doesn't really drive the overall demand up or down that much. And this is what we see in this case, the correlation of price to 
to the overall sales is very low. However, once you are within the category, discounting your products versus the rest of the category actually will give you, is supposed to give you a market share. So what you want to do is instead of thinking about driving your dollars with your price, you should be thinking about how much your discounts will impact your market share. So I've created another Power BI variables and so should you. By the way, here there's going to be no DAX, there's going to be very little code. This is just to give you an idea of what's possible. If you find this content interesting, then please leave questions in the comments so that we will know that it resonates. And then we'll add more meat to the bone, we'll add a bunch of DAX and code to this to make it more actionable. Right now I'm just trying to give you guys ideas of what you need to be thinking about as you're trying to manage your promotion effectiveness. So once you understand, you probably want to do a variable to, that correlates pricing with demand just to understand the elasticity of that process. The next thing what you want to do is you want to understand the correlation between discounting your products and how much market share you gain. So in our case, we see almost 0.7 correlation. That's very significant. So what that tells me is that every time I discount my product, I actually gain quite a bit of market share. How do I know that? Correlation is positive. That means with growth of discount, so if I discount more, then I'm going to gain a lot of market share. Then if we look at this chart here, you can actually see this, that Pix and Valis correlate almost perfectly. When I have a big spike in discount, usually that drives a big gain or loss, gain in share, and then when my prices uh, discounts are low, then uh, I lose the share. With a couple of examples, with a couple of ex um, exceptions, that works very well. So you could see that that correlation is really hard. The next question is, well, what should you do? You really need to understand how not to over discount. And this is a topic for another video. However, what I want to under help you think through is how do you get to this ultimate kind of tool that allows you to perfectly plan your promotion. And what you might do is you might plot all of your promotions and you might say, okay, let me take a look at all of my discounts. So here's a graph of all of my promotions. And then for each promotion, I could see when I discount a lot, my, so when my discount shrinks, so my prices are high, my share, actually, uh, I lose it. And then when my discount is high, I actually gain share. So that kind of gives you an idea that, yes, there's some elasticity in the way the market reacts to you discounting your products. And then the next question is, okay, well, how much? Well, what you want to do is you basically want to translate this bubble chart here into a line, basically figure out what is my function for every percent of discount, how much share will I gain or lose? And that's what this calculation does here. So here in this particular case, for every percent of discount, I'm going to gain 1% of market share. Again, this is the rough, uh, this, is, this happens when prices are not fluctuating in a crazy, right? But basically within, as long as you say, stay within a certain reasonable set of parameters, dialing your discount up or down by one point will give you this 1.5% multiplier. And that's what you see here. So in order, so basically that gives you a rough idea if you're trying to do your promotions and try to understand promotion effectiveness. Once you have these course high level numbers, you can then, once you understand this is an analysis of demand, the categories, this, the the holidays and other things that are driving your, your demand, you could then start planning and kind of start anticipating what your competition does. So basically what this says here, as long as you undercut your competition by 1%, uh, or I mean, as long as you undercut your competition for every 1%, of you being aggressive, you're gonna gain share. And then if you can understand the category overall, they can kind of mathematically solve the, uh, the um, how much you wanna discount based on demand. Now, I do not want this video to get too long. What uh, I would plan to do next is get super deep into elasticity. I'm happy to cover math and start talking about how you might be doing and setting yourself up to be able to do a really a uh, good planning cycle where you could do this at a SKU level, you could do it at a brand level. We could start talking about product cannibalization because what happens when you discount a product within a brand, a lot of times you do, you know, get one, get one free or something like this. Not only are you going to gain market share on the on this product, but you might be losing market share, you might be losing sales on another. So this is a highly complicated product, uh, co complicated topic. 
and I don't want to spend hours and hours and hours today on, on this. But again, I just want to test the water, see if this is interesting, leave your comments below. And if there's interest, then we will follow up with more and more content where we will peel the onion and kind of demystify all of the logic and all of the calculations and also how you might do everything else in fabric to have all this set up so you could dial in and do really well with your promotion and trade effectiveness. So that's about it for today. If you have questions, if you want to get in contact with us, then go to obvins.com slash contact. If you enjoyed this video and you found it to be helpful, we would appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I will see you back soon on the next one.